There are several indications to use the Belmont. First and foremost, anytime you need to give a lot of fluid or blood products fast. Other indications, massive trauma, massive blood transfusion protocol, or sepsis. The Belmont Rapid Infuser can be located in the emergency department, the operating room, PICU, and the SICU. In the emergency department, there is a Belmont in both code rooms. Always start by making sure the Belmont is plugged into the wall outlet and making sure that the electrical cord is attached to the Belmont. The cord can come loose from the machine with movement. If the machine won't turn on for you, make sure the cord is connected to the machine. The power switch is on the back of the machine. Remember to make sure that the machine is plugged into the wall and that the cord is attached snugly to the back of the machine. Once the Belmont turns on, there are instructions on how to put the tubing in as a reference. The company that makes the Belmont suggests to start with the heating element, but we have found it easier to start with the interlock block. You will need to gather the Belmont disposable tubing and the Belmont extension tubing. The Belmont tubing alone is quite short and you will need to attach the extension tubing to the end of it. Start by attaching the Belmont extension tubing to the end of the main Belmont tubing. After attaching the extension tubing to the end of the main Belmont tubing, you are ready to place the tubing into the Belmont system. Using the Belmont is not like using your regular IV pump. With the Belmont, you will load the tubing without priming it and without attaching any fluids to it. Open the door to the unit. Snap the reservoir chamber into the holder. Fit the interlock block with the blue arrow on top of the shelf. The blue arrow should be on the top and pointing towards the machine. This will not click into place, but will be flush with the top of the machine. Thread the large light blue tubing along the wide blue line. Think blue on blue. Thread the clear tubing on the right along the thin blue line. Next, place the round heat exchanger into the center of the machine with the red arrow pointing up and run the red tubing along the red line. Think red on red. Place the pressure chamber into the pressure channel. Press the larger of the two tubings into the groove. You should press hard enough that it is flush with the air detectors or even pushed in a little further. Then run it to the left of the black lever. Run the smaller tubing to the right of the air detector and down to the right of the black lever. Now, close and latch the door. Now it's time to turn on the Belmont. Once the tubing is secure and the door is shut, you will see the priming screen. The power switch is on the back of the machine. Remember to make sure that the machine is plugged into the wall and that the cord is attached snugly to the back of the machine. Make sure that the top three ports are clamped. Note, these are the only pieces that should be clamped. Everything else remains open. Attach your normal saline or blood product to the tubing and unclamp the line. You should not run lactated ringers on the Belmont. Products you can run on the Belmont are normal saline, packed red blood cells, and plasma. You can connect up to three bags of fluid to run at the same time. Each port can have its own bag. All fluids will run at the same rate if hung at the same level. This allows you to run blood, plasma, and normal saline at the same time.
lactated ringers should never be used on the Belmont. Remember, the fluids that can be run on the Belmont are normal saline, packed red blood cells, and plasma. The Belmont tubing has a blood filter on it. Fluids that should not be run on the Belmont include platelets, cryoprecipitate, lactated ringers, dextrose containing fluids, or hypotonic fluids. After you have attached the fluid and unclamped the line, you are ready to prime. Press Prime. The screen on the machine will indicate how much longer until this phase of priming is complete. It takes 100 milliliters to prime the tubing located inside the machine and takes around 13 seconds. The next screen will tell you that the system is now primed and that it is time to prime the patient line. Remember, you should already have your extension tubing attached to the Belmont. To prime the patient line, tap on Patient Line Prime. Tapping this once will have the machine prime the line at 50 mils per minute. If you want to prime faster, you can press and hold Patient Line Prime to run faster. Just like priming any other tubing, you will prime this line until you do not observe any air in the tubing from the machine to the end of the extension tubing. The end of the extension tubing has a cap with a hole in it to allow for priming without removing the cap. Press stop after you have confirmed that there is no air in the tubing. Check the tubing coming out of the machine all the way to the end of the tubing that will eventually be attached to the patient. You are now ready to connect the tubing to the patient and infuse. Our IV start kits come with the extension tubing attached to a blue clave. Do not attach the Belmont tubing to the extension tubing. This will drastically reduce the amount of flow. While the fluid will run through the blue clave, the rate will be diminished because of the blue clave. Do your best to attach the tubing directly to the hub of the IV catheter without a blue clave. This will allow for the fastest flow possible. After you have connected the tubing to the IV catheter in the patient, you are ready to infuse. Press Infuse. The infusion will start at 10 milliliters per minute. Let's look at the screen together. The top left boxes are the set rate and the actual rate. The set rate is how fast you have programmed the machine to run. The actual rate is how fast the fluid is actually going in. The actual rate is affected by the size of the catheter that is in the patient. The larger the IV, the faster the fluid will go into the patient. The middle right box shows you the amount of pressure it is taking to push the fluid in. The Belmont will never allow this pressure to be high enough to blow your IV. This lets you use the Belmont with any size of IV. Just remember, if you have a small IV, the fluid will go slower, and that's okay. You can adjust the set rate of the infusion by pressing the up and down arrows for the infuse rate. We suggest pressing the 500 mils per minute rate button to run your infusion as fast as possible. Remember, just because you set the rate at 500, you will likely not ever get that high. The volume infused is calculated for every drop of fluid that goes into the patient. This is located in the left middle box of the screen. You can also set the machine up for a specific bolus by pressing the bolus button on the right lower half of the screen. The volume infused of that bolus will be shown directly under the total amount of the bolus as it is being delivered and will be shown until the bolus is complete. You can choose to deliver 100 ml, 200 ml, 400 ml, 
500 mil or 1000 milliliter bolus. To change the bolus amount, press the stop button on the bottom right, then hold down the bolus button until the amount you would like to give is shown, then release the button. The machine will automatically change the set rate to 200 milliliters per minute whenever you choose the bolus option. You can change that rate by either pressing the up and down arrows or by pressing the 500 milliliter per minute rate button. If you are running multiple products at the same time, they will all run together at the same rate. As we all know, things can get crazy during resuscitation and you may not be paying attention to your fluids. You may be so happy about using that Belmont that you forget how fast the fluids are going in and be caught off guard when you run out of fluid. If you run your bag or bags dry, don't worry. This is one of our favorite things about the Belmont. The first thing you're going to want to do is press mute. This will make that loud sound the machine is making stop and hopefully stop making everyone in the room look at you with the, why is that machine making that loud noise and what did you do? Press the mute button. Then replace whatever fluid you need to. Yep, take away that empty bag and replace it with a new one. Once you do that, the screen will give you the option to reprime. This repriming only takes around 13 seconds and then you're good to go. Hooray! As soon as the Belmont realized you were out of fluid, it clamped off the patient side of the tubing to ensure that no air would ever reach the patient. While the machine is repriming, the air is pushed up and out of the machine and it never touches your patient. Once you have completed the resuscitation, you must turn off the machine to take the tubing out. If you don't turn off the machine, the tubing won't come out. couple things to remember. The Belmont can run on a fully charged battery for about 30 minutes. When the Belmont is running on the battery, it can only run at 50 milliliters per minute and it does not heat the fluid. If you notice that you can't get the Belmont to run more than 50 mils per minute, double check to make sure that it's plugged into the wall and the cord in the back is attached to the machine. If the machine won't turn on or turns off very quickly, make sure that it is plugged into the wall and that the cord in the back is attached to the machine. If you are working in the emergency department, we have blood products readily available. There are packed red blood cells and plasma in the trauma bay in the blood refrigerator. Remember, you can run packed red blood cells, plasma, and normal saline all at the same time if needed while using the Belmont. Tips for success. Make sure the Belmont is plugged in. Use the biggest IV you can. Connect the tubing directly to the hub of the IV catheter. Do not use blue claves. Do not infuse lactated ringers, platelets, or cryo when using the Belmont.